Hello and welcome to today's Damp Show with me, Damp Sam. So this is a how to spot signs of damp. So just a quick one, just before we start, uh, if anybody wants to get in contact with Damp Sam and for me to help you with um, any of your issues, you can contact me at dampsam at alldrydampproofing.com and we'll point you in the right direction. So uh, get in touch and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Damp can be a horrible problem to live with, in addition to making your home feel cold and uncomfortable. It can wreck your decor, damage furniture and exasperate, I had problems with this word before, and exasperate health problems like asthma. (coughs) In several cases, it could cause structural damage to your home. I'll just pull them up on this point because uh, what he's talking about there is probably dry rot. And if dry rot gets into um, your uh, your structural um, timbers, then you can get issues. And dry rot loves dark, cold, uh, dark, humid, hot places where you'll probably not see it. So uh, that's what he's talking about there. Find out how to spot and fix damp with our guide and whether it's covered by your home insurance. Probably not, but we'll talk about this as we get into it. In this guide, what is damp? What causes damp? Types of damp, early signs of damp, how to spot damp when viewing a house, how to stop damp problems in the home, damp diagnosis. So you're gonna get a, a fair bit in this uh, in this next half an hour. I think it might be a bit more than half an hour. So what is damp? Damp is the existence of condensation or other moisture on the structure of a property. The build-up of moisture can lead to a host of problems, and if you don't deal with it, the result can be serious damage to the building's infrastructure. I've just touched on this before, probably dry rot. Um, Not much is going to affect your structure with condensation, rising damp, Penetrating damp, well, penetrating damp, yeah, so penetrating damp as well. So if you've got penetrating damp round chimney stacks, um, you've got a lot of supporting timbers there. And same way, um, first floor, second floor, if you've got penetrating damp around there, you can get wet rot, dry rot on uh, joist ends and stuff like that. So it can affect your structure. And you always get a um, damp surveyor to have a look at it. Um, and if possible, get them to open up. Um, open up these areas and do a destructive survey. survey. Damp problems tend to increase over time, but if you don't know where to look, they can happen invisibly. And by the time they're spotted, major work can be required to put things right. So again, if you've got penetrating damp and it's uh, it's structural timbers and they've become wet, you're not going to exactly see them. You might see... Um, cuboidal cracking of your skirting boards you might see some signs so um, keep your eyes peeled have a look around your house now see what uh, what damp patches you can see what causes damp if a house is suffering from a damp problem it means there's unwanted moisture it usually found it's usually found in walls ceilings and floors a damp problem can lead to when what uh, can occur when water or moisture works its way into your house this can simply be a result of condensation around the windows but there can can be plenty of other ca- causes these include so this is going to be a little list of uh, damp issues leaking or burst pipes and overflows you could consider getting trace and access cover this is for your insurance to protect yourself against the cost of finding the leak. Now, I'm just talking from my point of view. I get letters every year from Yorkshire Water asking me if I want to check out um, insurance on pipes that's just outside property. Um, never used it once. So, well, I didn't take it out. I've never used it once. I've lived here 22 years. So I've, I'm, I'm in front. But some people might want that insu- uh, that kind of sit peace of mind in insurance broken broken or missing roof tiles that let water in with today's weather 
you'll find out whether you've got any uh, any missing roof tiles because have a look at bedroom ceilings if uh, if your roof space is above because you might uh, end up with um, some wet patches up there. But what tends to happen if 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 it's just a small amount of rain and you've got an hole in your roof, it'll rain through. If you've got uh, insulation in your in your roof space, what tends to happen is that insulation will get wet, and then when um, when weather changes, when it gets drier, it will evaporate back out. But if it's torrential like it is today, <laughs> biblical in fact, then uh, you're going to get an issue. You're going to get an issue, and that water is going to work its way into your property. Um, block gutters, yeah. If you've got any block gutters, you'll see overflowing today. Leaking windows, yeah. Again, if you've got driving rain, you're gonna you're gonna see leaks coming through your windows. Moisture rising up from the ground, particularly if there's no damp proof course, or the damp proof course is damaged. Bricks that are porous. Um, oh, that's <sighs> there's some bricks that are porous, but you've more there's more chance that um, rising down is going to travel up through your mortar course rather than through your bricks. Some uh, sand and cement mortars are quite dense and can be stronger than the bricks uh, and what you'll find is you'll get spalling in that case. A leaking dishwasher or washing machine tends to get that a lot as well. Uh, seemingly innocent household tasks can also be problematic if there's not adequate ventilation, such as drying wet clothes, showering, bathing and cooking. Big problem, and you'll see that today because it's a it's it's really humid outside. So if you've not got adequate adequate ventilation inside, you're gonna start seeing some issues. So if you've got if you've not got your heating on, windows will be steaming up, um, and condensation probably forming on cold spots, which can be uh, solid walls, things like that. <laughs> A small patch of damp on a wall internally might not seem too bad, but it's if it's not dealt with, it may cause more serious structural problems to your home. And you could find that if you want to claim for the cost on your insurance, on your home insurance, it doesn't cover it. And it probably won't cover it. Majority of um, people's home insurance is um, if you have a leak, They'll not pay for your broken pipe or, or, or whatever, but they will pay for the damage. Um, you know me and, and, and house insurance and insurance people. What tends to happen is they'll come out and all, all insurance people are, are really honest. No, really they are, I bet. And what tends to happen is they come out and they'll look at policy and they'll tell you you're not covered straight away. And 80% of people... Uh, take that and um, they don't question it. But you, what you'll find is that majority of the time you are covered. Um, so, you know, don't take their word for it because I just, I just don't believe a word that any of them say. I've had some rate ding-dongs we, uh, what what they call loss, loss adjusters, what they send out. So when they say a rep's coming from insurance company, that person is trying to get out of paying pain any money for you um foot damage and they'll look for things so that's the first thing that they're looking for so w <laughs> tip for you if somebody comes out from insurance company always have a microphone on and always record the conversation so you can refer to it uh, after and you're not going to get some tied up in knots big tip there types of damp there are three main types of damp there's not really but we'll go with this He's saying main types of damp, so I think these these are what he's saying, big three. Rising damp, penetrating damp, condensation caused damp. They're not big three, so when you've heard me, I think they're most familiar, what pe people are most familiar with. I wouldn't even say rising damp is one of the biggest now, because uh, the majority of properties have got a damp proof course in, and there's not many that I go to now that's not had some kind of even a retrofit damp proof course put in. So you're normally talking about bridging issues. Um, condensation caused damp this time of year, a lot of issues. And it's it's whether the person that's coming out to look to, to your property is qualified enough to diagnose these issues. So 
there's a lot of people not been on courses and don't know how moisture affects walls in different ways and a lot of plasters that that, that sort of kind of call the sends damp proofers because of they've, they've, they've done some damp work um they might what they tend to do is they go in and they, they, they diagnose everything as rising damp and this is what tends to happen we videos that i'm putting on hopefully that they gain a bit more educated and uh, and a lot of them will listen now and they'll go on these courses so with social media it is getting a bit better but you know whether these people are going to go on courses and invest in themselves that's a different um a different problem so here we go rising damp this is where moisture rises up from the ground through walls in a capillary action. Newer houses should have a damp proof course to guide uh, to guard against damp, but they can be compromised over time. So yeah, they can. Um, the capillaries uh, is is water will find its easiest route. Um, and there's capillaries in brick and there's capillaries in the mortar. And it tends to be, like I've just explained before, it's easier for the water to go um, through the mortar course. And this is this is um, decades of um, research has found that the, the rising down the capillaries in the mortar is the easiest path. And this is what... Uh, this is why we, when we when we install a retrofit damp proofing course, we drill and inject the mortar course because that's its easiest path, um, and that stops you know water rising up from the ground. Signs of damp include damp patches at the start and base of a wall gra gradually moving upwards, rotting skirting boards or plaster. Floor coverings such as tiles, vinyl, carpets that are wet and lifting. Peeling paint or wallpaper. A white, powdery, salt-like substance on a wall. A yellow or brown tide mark or staining of a wall. I think with these, he's got, he's got different types of damp. Um, he's got different types of damp mixed up in there. So your yellow brown tide marks and staining on a wall that sounds more like um sulfate salts uh peeling wallpaper and paint that would tend to be uh, an, an internal issue condensation i mean wallpaper will peel if it's wet front back as well but um you can you can get it mixed up so i, I wouldn't like if you see peeling wallpaper and paint i wouldn't necessarily just stray away and go that's rising damp um, floor coverings, vinyls and carpets that are wet and lifting again not really going to be la um, rising damp that it, that could be condensation forming on a cold spot on a cold solid floor rotting, skirting plasterboards yeah that, that can uh, that can be rising damp uh, damp patches at the base of the wall yeah gra gradually moving up and then look for a salt band I think that's what it's saying with a white powdery salt like substance on a wall Penetrating damp. This is a result of external problems on your property where water finds its way from the outside. This can be anything from missing roof tiles to broken or porous brickwork as well as issues with guttering or damaged seals around the windows and doors. Signs of penetrating damp include damp patches that have moved horizontally through the walls rather than up from the ground and that might get darker when it's raining. External damage included, including to the brickwork, moss and algae growth, paint peeling or wallpaper, uh, paint, paint pe peeling or wallpaper, rotting plaster. So yeah, all of them. Um, but a funny thing, I went to I went to a um, a job on. To survey a job on Friday, and I'm just writing a report up now. And I was speaking to the the, the guy that owned it, um, and there's all sulfate salts around tops at chimney breast in these these attics. It's a student uh, student house, and 
the guy were adamant that water's coming through the roof and it's been a brand new roof, it's all been sealed. And one of the things that I said to him, I says, if water were coming through from the back, what tends to happen is over a long period of time, you get like sort of rings where when it's rained, it's become really wet. So you'll have a darker circle in the middle and then that will spread outwards and then it'll, it'll recede. And then when it rains again, it'll spread outwards and recede. And each time it rains, it might be heavier than others. So it might get wetter and then dry out quicker. So you, you tend to get these like satinous rings around the, around the patch and you can tell that it's, you know, it's, it's getting wet and then drying, then getting wet and then drying. These patches were just, um, they were just dark. So, uh, and, and it's around top of chimney as well. So, uh, that was just an observation from a survey that I did, uh, last week. Condensation caused damp. This is the most common form of damp and is often a result of carrying out basic household tasks without decent ventilation. Yep. This could include steam from cooking, drying damp clothes, the air condensers on surfaces and then creates water, which is it's like a simple explanation that um I've, I've spoke about this a lot, a lot of times, um, I'll, and I'll just say this. So, signs of condensation caused damp include damp patches and running down and water running down walls in any room, whether it's likely to be steam, such as bathrooms and the kitchen, water on windows, mould around the windows. It threw me a bit there because it's a, it says uh, it's likely to be steam. It basically it's water vapor. It's not steam, so um, it's water vapor. Um, and what tends to happen is when you're producing water vapor, you boil if you're boiling a, a a pan of potatoes and you've got no lid on it, then that water is boiling and the 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 water vapor is, the, the the moisture is just evaporating into the air out of this. Uh, bubbling mass of potatoes and if you think that's uh that's an action that you can see because you can see it bubbling and you can see like spitting coming out you can see the um water vapor coming out of the top so you can physically see it one thing you can't physically see uh, and a lot of people's got these is fish tanks so uh, people have these massive fish tanks and they're just sat in the front room with these fish uh sort of swimming about nicely you know looking lovely um but that is a source of moisture and that water in your fish tank is continually evaporating uh, just as the it is with, with your pan and that can add to uh to issues and uh, i've been in a couple of properties as well where they've uh they've had damp issues and i'll tell you when i went to i went to one at cuddeth for uh for a, a person on I was on Snydale Road, and they sent pictures of these um, watermarks on walls and black mold and everything, and and the the were at the wits end. They had all these these issues, and as soon as I walked through Dewar, I've never seen a fish tank as big in my life, and I think they'd got two, and the, they were about I think they were about four foot long, by about two foot high, probably and, and same width, massive and. Uh, and they wondered why they were getting, you know, condensation issues. They'd they'd got bad ventilation as well. So other telltale signs that suggest damp in a house include the appearance of mould or mildew on walls, floors or ceilings, water droplets on walls, dark or discoloured patches on walls or plaster. Excessive condensation on windows, not just in the winter. Rotting woodwork such as skirting boards. I think we we touched on that previously, on other damp uh, damp uh, types. By far the best way to check for damp is to use an expert surveyor. So I'm an average surveyor. <laughs> I'm an average surveyor. I'd never say I'm an expert because um, I'm in I'm in PCA Property Care Association. I'm a member, and um, 
some of the guys that's there, I've, I've, I've spoke about it before, professor-like status, what they don't know about damp um, is not worth writing. You know, you won't be able to fit it on Ender and Match, what they don't know. Some of, some of them, uh, and they've got their own damp companies, a lot of them. Um, and they're a lot more knowledgeable than me and they've been in industry a, long, a, a lot longer than me. It's just that I end up putting these videos on and they, they don't kind of keep the sense of the seven, the selves to the selves or sends to the sends. The surveyor should be thoroughly, uh, the surveyor should thoroughly check for any signs of damp inside or outside the property. Identify what type of damp it is and the likely cause. They should also offer advice on the best way to fix it. I can't argue with that. That's it. So up to the property, you diagnose, you're looking as you're walking up to the property, looking at outside, you go into the property, you have a look out back, you check all ventilation. Um, and if you're going to just look at one specific area inside a property, let the person know that it's just going to be one specific area. But we charge for surveys and it's because we have to look, I have to, I have to look inside and out and I have to look at everything in property. I even have to go in and sell us if there's a source of moisture. I'm not, I'm not just looking at one wall and saying, yeah, I know what it is. I have to get to the bottom of what it is. So, um, so that's what we do. How to spot damp when viewing a house. So this is, this is going to be interesting for anybody that's buying a house, anybody that's going to look to an house, anybody that's selling a house. So here you go. If you're viewing a house before buying, check for signs of damp. Start in the basement if it has one. Yep. So go into the cellar and this is a tip. Have a look, see if it's got any puddles in the cellar. Because if you've got puddles in the cellar, that means water's getting in. And it means there's a source of moisture. And it means that it's continually evaporating all year round. And that'll travel up through property and cause issues upstairs. Discoloration or damp patches on the walls is a telltale sign and you might be able to smell it too. The floorboards can rot if there's damp underneath them. While walls and ceilings can clearly show signs of damp, a bathroom can particularly be susceptible to damp because of the con Stunt hot because of the constant use of hot water. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mold should be easy to spot. It's also worth keeping an eye out in the airing cupboard and the water heater in there. And now I don't. I, this sounds like it's an old. Um, it's an old article because I don't think there's many people got airing cupboards now. I mean, I, I, I'm, they, they are still there whether you use it as an airing cupboard. But, um, I mean, we used to have one when uh, I lived on Newland Drive, but a lot of people's got combi boilers and stuff now. So um, whether you're going to you know, drape your stuff over a combi boiler, <laughs> I doubt it. But um, airing cupboard, yeah, have a look at airing cupboard. I don't know, I'm not sure what you're looking for because it, it, even in an airing cupboard, your tank is a sealed, it's a sealed tank, isn't it? Um, they're not open. So that, that could be... That could be an old and that. So, yeah, just, just, I won't, I won't particularly be going to airing cupboard. I'd, you, you're going to be able to see it in other places. How to stop damp problems in the home. Problems caused by condensation can be improved by doing your best to remove as much moisture from a room as you can and improving ventilation. To prevent condensation in the home, make sure you're using extractor fans in bathrooms and kitchens and keep windows open. Now, oh, let me get to end first. Where you have a localised problem, you might want to think about using a dehumidifier. Um, no, don't use a dehumidifier, especially with rates of what you have to pay for, your gas and electric, it's it'll cost you an absolute fortune unless there's a dehumidifier that is a, a, a low carbon one that's not going to cost much to run. I've not heard of one. 
and have run deal humidifiers and your your meter will be spinning um like a nudger, like a, a fruit machine. Um don't use deal humidifiers. I won't use them. It's best to invest that money in fans for your bathroom. So you get a low carbon, continuously running um fan in your in your in your bathroom. I'd keep away from humidistats and I'd keep away from um, fans that's on a timer. Get a continuously running one. If it's a low carbon one, have a look at how much it costs to run. Them that we've got, I've got one in my bathroom and I read instructions, I've spoke about it before, 49 pence it costs for the year, which is, uh, I think that's value for money, 49 pence to run a fan for a year. So I think this will be for prices went up you might be talking two quid so that's less than a penny a day so um i think most people could afford that i'm not judging everybody but i think you you know from what you're going to save in having black mold and having to have that treated and and other stuff get proper ventilation in your, in your kitchen don't use a deal minifier get somebody to sort it, it says keep windows open yeah open your windows but don't open them when it's like today, when it's when it's banging it down, when it's misty, when it's foggy, when it's snowing. Um, you know, just just be aware that if you have got to, um, if you've got windows open, that humidity is going to come inside. If you have penetrating damp due to porous bricks, replacing the bricks or pointing, uh, <laughs> replacing the bricks or painting them with silicon water repellent paints should help fix the problem you can get anti-damp paint from most diy stores right so don't use don't put silicon water repellent paint uh, on your on your walls outside or or inside because it creates a, a a vapor check you want if you want if you're going to use like a I'm not gonna call it a repellent. If you're gonna use a a cream that's gonna stop rain from going, you know, penetrating in something like storm dry that allows water vapor to go inside and out. It don't block pores. It just lines the pores. So um, your your Thompson's water seals. If you're wanting it as a, a as a pore blocker and to to stop anything going through, then you know by by all means use it. But be aware that it it only coats the surface and it'll not last long so it'll get weathered probably only last year a year and it's um, and it'll be laying water in again but use something like storm dry other companies have got i don't know other companies um what they call their creams um special names from but i think that they're all the same but you've got to just read the instructions make sure that water vapor will go through once you've applied it um yeah Anti anti damp no no not anti damp no don't <laughs> don't use an anti damp paint. Um no get just get it fixed. Get it fixed properly. You can use an anti mould paint. I won't use an anti damp paint. Anti mould paint. But you can get anti mould paint additives that you can put in your paint and mix it up yourself. Or you can you can go to a, a DIY store and get an anti mould paint that's already made up. And there's uh, there's plenty of companies that do it. I don't know if Wix has done their own, but um, Johnson's and Jewelux and, and places like that, they do. You might also be able to stem the problem by fixing or replacing your gutters, but not all damp problems are easily resolved, though. You're not right there. Some, you know, so you need specialists. You need specialists to diagnose it. On some occasions, you might need expert help. On a lot of occasions, you'll need expert help. And Damp Sam does provide a free service. At the minute, it's free. We've got a Facebook group called Damp Sam. Why is my property damp, Damp Sam? And you can join that Facebook group and you can add your photos to it if you've got a damp problem. So before phoning somebody up and getting a mark, stick your photos on. Let me have a butcher's. I'll have a look at it. And I'll point you in the right direction. If we can help you, we'll help you. If not, if you're somewhere, I don't know, 
bottom at country or up in Scotland or wherever or Wales, Ireland, um, we get calls from everywhere, uh, but we'll point you in the right direction. If you're lucky, you get onto WhatsApp group and we can t- talk to you on there, but there's other people in, in, in group and they will um, add, put their advice uh, and I do look at everyone. So one way of getting it in front of an expert, join our Facebook group. So, do, 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 do. I've just lost where, I'm, where, where I am. So, uh, on some, yeah, particularly if, so you might need expert help, particularly if it's rising damp you're up against. A surveyor should be able to accurately measure levels of damp and pin down the cause of the problem. Yeah, a, a, a average surveyor, an average qualified surveyor will be able to um, diagnose exactly what it is and they'll 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 do it we aren't um we aren't having to open any areas up so um yeah so always use a a, a professional some of the fixes professionals might suggest are having a cavity tr- having a cavity tray either replaced or fitted to stop water from the outside reaching the inner walls um now now um i'm not having that one so new houses should already have a cavity tray. Um, your older houses are solid walls, so you you won't have a cavity tray there. Um, no, 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 no. So I'm not having that one. A cavity tray. I've never I've never gone and said you need a cavity tray putting in ever. No. Having a new damp proof barrier or damp course fitted. This involves injecting chemicals into the wall to create a waterproof barrier um it's not a i won't say waterproof barrier it's it's a damp proof barrier it's what waterproof and damp proof is a, a different so it's not a, it's not going to be a poor bo- blocker so in your capillary it's not going to block it it's going to line it so again it will allow water vapor but it'll not allow um, water to track up so um, that's kind of wrong having the internal walls or floors sealed in damp proofing materials yeah you can you can have a liquid membrane put on um, years ago you used to have to tech your floor up and then they invented uh, dry base things like that products like that liquid damp proof membranes so now you can sort of level your floor and then you can put a, 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 a liquid DPM on top so you don't have to rip these floors up. And by the way, liquid DPM, don't like dry base, um, brilliant to have in, uh, have in your kit because you can do all sorts with it. Absolutely all sorts. Your surveyor should advise on the best approach to resolve your damp problems and the costs involved. Yeah. Costs can run into thousands of pounds. So it's always worth getting a couple of quotes before hiring a tradesperson. Um, rather than wasting people's time and getting loads of quotes, um, anybody that's in PCA will, will not join in the race to the bottom. So if I find out, if somebody wants me to do it work, I'll come and do it. It's a bespoke service. Um, I'll survey it and I'll do it work myself. Um, and you know it's going to be right. But... If I find out people are getting loads of quotes, I ain't going to go. I'm not joining it race at bottom. I ain't going to be cheapest. So you do your due diligence. So ask about who's the best at doing it. I mean, we're fair. So our prices are sort of similar up and down country to, to all the damp proofing companies. So um, I, I kind of roughly know prices, even though there's not a set price that everybody uses but you can work out and be in ballpark so if people want to use us because they've got confidence in us they've read reports they've seen a face um rather than going with a bigger company we are it's people working for that brand not necessarily um the best people the best people own the company the uh, the people that work for it are not necessarily 
the best at um, at what they do because they're getting told what to do. So they'll have a manager telling them the system to do. Um, whereas when you get somebody like um, a smaller company, I think there's more chance of, you, you know you're getting the qualified person to actually do the work. Um, whether it's whether that's better, I don't know. Um, but you'll have to do your own due diligence, ring about, ask about, you know, ask people who the viewers before, um, and you know if they're any good, and that's that's how you're going to get um, a good job done. It's not necessarily the cheapest person, and in fact, I'll tell you definitely, it's not going to be the cheapest person, and it's not necessarily most expensive as well. So I'd say you know do your own due diligence, but. Um, if I'm having any work done, I don't go and get loads of quotes like Dom Licklewood says. I'll get best person for a job rather than um, you know tons and tons of quotes. So let's get on. Some of the fixes might include blah blah blah. blah your service. to help reduce <coughs> to help reduce the risk risk of your property suffering from such problems. Keep your house well maintained. And promptly deal with any problems that arise. So while it's banging it down today, and if you're listening to this, that's been a pre-recording of this, um, just do it when it rains. Go outside and have a, turn round and have a look at your house when it's raining. Have an umbrella and have a look at all your rainwater goods. You'll be able to see if there's any leaks. Um, flush your toilet and then run outside or get somebody to flush it and you'll be able to see whether any of your stack's leaking or any of your um, and then run your taps and see if there's any pipes leaking. So that's one of the things you can do. And then deal with the problems that arise. So if, you go, if your gutters are, are, are overflowing and leaking and got leads in, clear them out once a year or twice a year. This is especially important as damp problems are caused by poor maintenance. It's not normally covered by your house insurance. Um one of the things that would be covered, and you'd have to argue with them, because we've claimed on it, and, I th and it were only because I argued with them. We had a, a leak under the, under our bath. We didn't know it was there. We only found out that it was there because it started to smell. But it had been doing it for ages, and it was um, what were it were leaking. It was one of the taps that were leaking, but it had rotted all the floor. So we ended up having to take all bath art, wall art tiles off everything it were a big job but they were initially didn't want to uh, pay out but we argued and it was covered with insurance because the the pipe uh, weren't weren't covered we had to pay for that ascends to, to get that fixed but the damage that were caused we were covered for that damp diagnosis right so i'm going to tell you some areas and uh, what to look for so windows Look for condensation, water on the sills, black mould on the window frames, walls, feel feel cold and damp, mould, flaking paint, peeling wallpaper, white efflorescent salts, kitchens and bathrooms, black mould on the sealant, mould on the windows and ceiling, and musty smell. Yeah, mushrooms, musty mushroom smell fungus smell that can be an issue but all right let me tell you the basements musty smell mold and stains on the wall plus i'm gonna add one here water on the floor and if you if you are buying a house look for uh, fish tanks as well <laughs> but um yeah so watch for them i forgot what i'm gonna say so uh on that bit i'm gonna say something but i forgot home insurance guides I think we're at bottom then. Hang on. Yeah, so we're at bottom. So that's it. So it, it it's a good guide that, and it's uh, again I'll 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 give him credit. So it's it's Adam Aiken, and it's his um, it's his article, and it's on confused.com. It's on their website, and we're not in. We're, I'm not advertising. It was just I came across it and I thought I'll um, I'll go through it and I'm I'm just gonna pick points that I think are valid and points that are not. So 
again, if uh, if you want to recruit our services, if you've got, it's mainly if you've got issues that other companies can't get to the bottom of, um, the people tend to send us stuff, and they'll have had loads and loads of people out to look at it, and it's normally, it's normally, they get it in front of us, and we can go out, and we're not well. There's not there's not many problems that I that I've not uh, that I've not seen in in all the years I've been doing it. So um, you can be confident that you know we'd be able to solve your issues. I've remembered what I was going to say about kitchens. We get a lot of people. They'll ring. Uh, they'll they'll contact us. So they'll they'll, they'll email us and they'll say, "I've got a musty smell in my kitchen every time I open cupboards, and we can't see it." But I've an idea what it is, but they don't want to pay for surveys because uh, I think they think you, that you're going to come out and then you can just look at them. If they can't see out, we can't see out. But what we'd have to do is we'd have to look at all your ventilation. And what tends to happen if you have got this musty smell every time you open your cupboards, you've probably got black mould forming on a cold space behind your, uh, behind your cupboards and you can't really see it. You can take kicker board off, shine the torch underneath and see if you can see any black mould and stuff, but that's what's probably happened. So there'll be a lack of adequate ventilation in your kitchen. Water vapour's gone through your cupboards and then it's it's formed, moisture's formed on these um, walls and there's not enough ventilation to evaporate that and to, for it to continue on its journey. Some of the things you can do, so I'll, while I'm giving value, I'll give a bit more value. So um, some of the things you can do, obviously... Um, low carbon, continuously running fan, get one of them fitted, 150 mil if you're on an external wall. And you can have vents put in your kicker boards. So you can have a louvered vent put in your kicker boards, which will allow ventilation to go underneath. Um, but I don't know whether it's going to get rid of smell until you take your kitchen out because that black mould is going to be there. So that's probably what you're, what you're smelling, you're smelling fungus and black mold and this is one of the issues because they get you to have a look at this and you, you, you get them to address ventilation but they're still going to be able to smell that smell so they're not going to think it's the fixed and the because it's it's there from before so this is damp sam if you want to get in touch again it's um simon at the damp show.co.uk or you can join our facebook group Damp Sam, why is my property damp, damp Sam? Look for it on Facebook groups and uh, and see if you can join. Send us photos, I'll have a look at it. Jobs are good. Un. So until next time, this is Damp Sam signing off. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope rain stops for you. Well, I do and I don't. It's, uh, like I said, pan coins hitting floor. Right, see you later. Bye-bye now. <laughs>